Welcome to Rock Your Talk. I'm Lisa Reed with Rock Your Talk, Get Speaking Gigs Now, and Productive Learning. I'm excited to have our guest today, Michelle Gilman. Welcome, Michelle. Thank you so much for having me. Glad to be here. I'm so excited to hear your tips. Michelle's going to talk to us about how to stay fit during a pandemic. I don't know if anyone can relate to that. I sure can. I cannot (laughs) wait to hear what she's going to share with us. Uh, A little bit about um, me and our sponsors. Uh, I'm the founder of Get Speaking Gigs Now, and I help speakers get booked, stay booked, and attract their clients through speaking. So we, we come up with a lot of great things. If that's something that fits you or interests you, you can grab free tips on how to get speaking gigs now at getspeakinggigsnow.com. So make sure and grab those. Another free gift is coming to you. And that's from Productive Learning, a company I work with and train for. We deal with personal development. We've been teaching people how to uncover the thinking that helps them get more of what they want in their life. We've been doing that for about 30 years. And we have a new course that's available called New Thinking for New Actions. You can grab that uh, as a guest of our show at ProductiveLearning.com slash gift. And that'll just come directly to you and you'll have all kinds of goodies and you get to really practice like, how would I change those thoughts into something that I really want? So two great gifts to to, uh, help you out. And meanwhile, let's get to hearing about Michelle and what what she's all about. Michelle, tell us a little bit about you. A little bit about me. Who am I and, and what Who do I are do? You? So, <laughs> again, my name is Michelle and I am a uh, certified personal trainer and owner of Empower Fitness that I have had for about the last 11 years. I'm also a weight loss coach and motivational speaker. And uh, although I do train men and women, the majority of my clients over the years uh, are pretty much women 40 and over. Uh, and then I'm also what's called a corrective exercise specialist, hmm. uh, which means I essentially specialize in injury prevention. It's a really fancy way to say that I can kind of address the body mechanics, uh, muscle imbalances, injury compensations that we tend to have as we age. So I have a little bit more uh, knowledge and background in that area. So that's uh, that's me in a nutshell. That sounds awesome. Yeah, I, it's always fascinating how we end up getting into the field yeah. that we're in, right? Like exactly. I've never done it. Well, that's not true. I actually was a gymnastics coach when I was in okay. college. I, I taught gymnastics. But after that, I kind of ended up being physical with, you know, learning about the body and stuff I, I didn't really get into too much. So didn't that's so follow cool. it. Yeah, um, <laughs> wasn't my passion. But that's okay. We all have, we all have things. We all have them. Yeah, exactly. All here for you get people reasons. speaking gigs. So. There we go. Well, I help them to get them to, I like, I'm, I'm the whole, and you're probably the same way of a, let me teach you how to fish versus give you a fish. Like let's, right. let's get that skill so you can get it over and over again. Exactly. I had exactly. A, um, yeah. So really good stuff there. And so tell us what's your first tip on how do you stay fit during a, a pandemic? Like a pandemic. Yes. Uh, exactly. So tip number one, and again, I just want to point out that, you know, if I'm, quote unquote, an expert in fitness. I'm not sure right now anyone is an expert in anything because this is just craziness, these unprecedented times, but hopefully I can give you and your viewers some tips, some suggestions on how you can kind of stay fit during this, you know, really new time that we're experiencing. So tip number one, uh, create your new norm. Mm -hmm. So the bottom line is in the last maybe five months or so, uh, any, it's anything but normal for us. We've had to adjust our daily routines, Uh, how we socialize, uh, how and where we work, uh, how and where we exercise. And I've seen a lot of friends uh, and clients struggle to find and maintain an exercise routine of really any kind. Uh, Mm -hmm. We we just don't have quite as much accountability, motivation. So my suggestion, my tip is to let go of what you were doing pre-COVID and create your new norm. Mm -hmm. Uh, no one knows how long this is going to last. And so we really just need to adjust and be flexible. And it's not easy because we are creatures of habit and we don't do well with change. The issue though, is that when we hold on so tightly to what we were doing before all of this started, like you went to the gym five days a week or you walked every day or whatever you did, and that can't work for you now, uh, we, ho- we, we end up frustrated and disappointed because we're trying to hold on to something that we can't do anymore. So right. that's basically tip number one. We've kind of just got to be flexible and adjust into this, this, this new landscape that we're living in right now. Well, and I like that because it, it actually, it's funny, it ties into your website, you know, the empower uh, empowerment. Right. But I think when, when you are able to take a stand like that, it's more empowering versus 
and, and this is something I've been talking about with the speakers that I work with, like if you're waiting in a position of where you're waiting to see what's going to happen and I'm going to wait and, until this clears up so that then I right. can go speak in person, I'm like, no, 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 no. We want right. to empower yourself and say like, what can I do now? Yes, things right. have changed. What can I do now that's going right. to help me get towards my goal? And now exactly. in my world, we're talking about seeking and building your business sure. in this sense it's a goal it might be of your right. daily fitness routine or right. a certain certain kind of physical goal that you have so that makes right. sense to be really exactly. intentional about it exactly that. all right what's your second tip for us so it really kind of piggybacks on the first one which is the first one creating a new norm well how do we do that uh create structure mm -hmm. accountability and motivation for yourself now this can be tough because Let's face it, the reality is many of us uh, don't love to exercise. I've been hearing this for many years from my clients. What? Uh, they're not, they're not groundbreaking news here. <laughs> I know, shocker, <laughs> um, newsflash. Uh, many people, why, why do we do it? Okay, unless you absolutely just love to exercise. We, we wanna keep our weight in check. We want to look and feel better in our body. And as we age, uh, get the health benefits, you know, of course, of that. So. I would say in the years I've been doing this, the top two things that I people struggle, I see stru people struggle with the most is accountability and motivation. Those are the two things. And it's even worse right now because our routines are completely out of whack. We stay yeah. up later, we sleep in later, we drink and eat more perhaps. And when it comes to exercise, we just don't have that accountability. Nobody really knows. And, and again, right now, many gyms are closed, as you know. So nobody really knows if you went out and did what you were gonna do, or do you just say, ah, you know what, I'm just not gonna do it today. Mm -hmm. So when we create structure in a new routine, it builds in more accountability for us. And then that motivation you get when you're more consistent with the routine. So it kinda, it all goes together. So basically, how do you do that? How do you create that structure and accountability? Cause that's really where it comes down to. Um, I will tell you, uh, the number one way to do it is to hire a trainer or coach. Uh, it is the best way. And why? Because when you pay for it or when you invest in yourself, your health, your, your well-being, your physiological being, uh, you're way more willing to show up and do it. So the accountability is already built in. And then hopefully that trainer is going to create an exercise routine that you can do consistently, make sure you're using proper form and technique, uh, and then you don't get injured. So that's, that's the best way. If that is not you know, feasible for whatever reason, budget or otherwise, then I would say uh, recruit a trusted friend, a close relative, obviously, you know, with COVID, we have to watch who we're with, uh, to serve as kind of an accountability partner, someone who's as motivated as you that you're not just going to carry, but you can you know, kind of motivate each other. So uh, that so is my tip number that. two. Yeah, because if you don't tell anybody what you're doing, mm -hmm. then it's easier to... Uh, right not keep your commitment to yourself exactly if someone else knows that you're supposed to be there or you're uh, even if it's a zoom workout or whatever right. you want to do um yeah. then, then that just it, it creates that one more obstacle to to right you avoiding your <laughs> commitment you it's wanna, just so much easier right now to yeah. just you know just not do it and and i full disclosure for about the first two months of what was a complete kind of shut down quarantine stay at home order mm -hmm. i uh was here in my home office uh sitting in this chair my covid project if you will was organizing thousands of photos which is a project in and of itself that many women yeah. i talked to are like, oh i would love to do that with all our family photos Absolutely. i i got quite a the quite a bit done but then i i did get called back to work we started you know open up the gym and, and i got called back to work and that ceased <laughs> but that was my covid project and so i didn't get a lot of exercise in so no one's immune to this it's just a an unprecedented time that we're trying to kind of navigate together yeah and i appreciate what you said about how like it it doesn't we're not trying to like or are you understanding that people tend to just not like exercise mm -hmm. But then there's that other part of it. It's like, well, but if we want these other things, then that's right. that's the price of admission, if you will, right? Sure. And so sure. it's not about like trying to get you to change your mind. It's just like, well, right. what could you do? What what kind of structure would work for you so that right. you can get the things that you want to do with your fitness? That's that's exactly. Exactly. And what's your what's your third tip, Michelle? Third tip. So number three, and it's funny that you just said that because it it really connects to this. Be realistic. Mm -hmm. 
and I've said this even pre pre COVID, not during a pandemic, right. but I've said this to years for years to my clients. It's really important, especially right now, to acknowledge the unique times we're living in and allow some what I'll call grace, some self-compassion, some kindness for ourselves as well as others. And part of that is making your goals realistic and doable. I don't like to say that it's the number one mistake I see in people because I just, I just don't like the word mistake. This is living. This is health and fitness. This is not a pass or fail. But I do see more often than not, people set their goals so high. I haven't been to the gym in years, but oh, I'm, I'm, uh, I, I want to get in shape. So they think that they've got to go five days a week or right. they're starting the new diet. I see it all the time in January, the new diet, and they cut out every single thing that they love and they can only go so long. So it's this all or nothing. So we make our goals really unrealistic. And it just, again, sets us up for this frustration and disappointment when we can't meet those goals. Mm -hmm. So it's better to come up with some sort of realistic goal. Uh, American Heart Association says a minimum of two and a half hours per week of what's considered moderate, and this could vary for people, moderate intensity aerobic activity or 75 minutes of vigorous aerobic activity. And again, that does vary for people uh, and that's spread throughout the week. And then you can add uh, some moderate to high intensity muscle strengthening type of, so that's more like the lifting weights, weight and resistance, uh, at least two days a week. Now that's what the American Heart Association is suggesting, but if you are complete, completely sedentary and not doing anything, then I would suggest maybe start out with one or two days, go for a walk. Mm. Uh, if you have a gym that can train right now outside, then great, do that. You recruit a friend. Just start out with what you think might be doable and then see if you can hold on to that and great. then go from there. Great tip. Yeah, I can really relate to that. And I've done both where I'm like, I'm like, I'm going to do all this stuff and then right. fall off. And then I've done it work. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. well, what can I, what's realistic with my lifestyle, with what's right. going on with my time, with what am I willing to do and get really sure. honest with myself. And right. um, it's the same with speaking too. Like sometimes uh, I'll talk to someone and they're, you know, maybe haven't spoken or maybe they've done a little bit. And I said, well, what, do, what are you imagining that you want to do? And they might say, well, I want to speak five times a week. And I said, okay, right. well, how, how often are you speaking now? Um, <laughs> twice a year. And I'm like, okay, well, right. no. to <laughs> well we're going to need to do a little bit of work to get there. And, and then right. getting clear of why do you want to get there and what's it worth to you? And is that sustainable? Right. And is that realistic with what you have going on and all this thing? So like uh, right. really just getting down to that root, like what's, mm -hmm. what, what can be done in that time? And can we work up to something? And and I, I have people ask me all the time, what is the best kind of exercise to do? Usually my first answer is, and my standard answer is, whatever kind of exercise that you are willing and able to do consistently. So that's my short answer. The best type of routine, I believe, is to incorporate both strength and resistance training, mm -hmm. gives you the heart benefits, the lungs, the muscles, the joints, uh, the tendons, full body workout. Um, and combine that with, and my type of training does combine the cardio and the strength. So that's my suggestion for the best type. But again, right now, if walking is what you're able to do, then get out there and do it consistently. Um, and then, you know, build some other things in there too. So it's whatever will work for you is basically, you know, my best tip. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's right. It does depend on what injuries you have or what sure. your capabilities are and stuff right. like that. So that's a very, very good tip. The best one is kind of like, when's the best time to plant a tree a hundred years ago? When's the next <laughs> time today, right? Yeah, exactly. Get started, put one foot in front of the other. And yeah. then, so I have a question for you, Michelle, this isn't yeah. um, related to fitness, but the show's called Rock Your Talk. So mm -hmm. I got to ask, what, do you have a favorite rock star or rock band? Ooh, I like, I like, I shock people with the amount of genres that I yeah. actually like rock. Oh, um, you know what? I have to answer with this one. Cause we were supposed to go to the concert and it got canceled. Um, just, I don't know if favorite, but disturbed. Oh yeah. I don't know if a lot of people will probably not a uh, yeah. lot of people are going to know that, but I'm not I sure a lot of people will know, but yes, they, they sing some, some weird. <laughs> That's okay. It, anyway, well, here's um, a tip for the audience. This is what the one song I know by them is there. They okay. did, they redid the, um, yes, the Simon and Garfunkel, um, sounds of silence, sounds of silence. I was going to say, yep. not true. Yep. Bridge over troubled water. Yes. Sounds of silence. Uh -huh. Yep. It is 
amazing and it will rock your world and yep. it'll give you chills and goosebumps and it's yep. so powerful. So I love Nothing it. like anything else that they sing, by the way. So oh, yeah, right. That's what stuff, I said. Yeah, yeah, down, yeah, yeah, down with the sickness is another one. If you listen to that, you're like, what is she thinking? What? <laughs> I like your tip. Yeah, have your have your viewers go and watch that or listen to that. <laughs> yeah, that I think will work for kind of everyone. Sort of grabs everybody. But um, yeah. yes, they have a different, they have a certain style. Very cool. Well, I didn't know they were in concert. How neat. Yes. One we'll day, wait, though. one day, we'll <laughs> yeah, it's back at summer concert. Until I know I had three, <laughs> three summer cancellation, summer concerts that I know, you know weren't going to happen, but that's okay. Someday. All right. Well, thank you for sharing your tips with us and giving us your time today. And oh, how can people find you? I, what website do you want them to go to? So uh, my website is called the letter M Power Fitness. OC for Orange County, uh, for Orange County, uh, OC.com, empowerfitnessoc.com. Perfect. And then I think uh, from what you were sharing with me before, people could go on there. And if they, if you're like, I really want to talk to Michelle, I need to know like a little bit more about what she does or gosh, right. I've been looking right. for a solution. They can, they can get a hold of you and talk mm -hmm. through their situation and see like, okay, how can you help me? Right. Right. Awesome. Absolutely. Right. I, I don't charge for any kind of what we call consultation conversation. Uh, okay. Can go over the types of training that I do, either in person training. Uh, our gym actually is, uh, you know, gyms as of right now are closed for indoor activity, but we actually took our gym and just took it outside. We're in this shaded area. It's great. We train in person. Uh, I can also do virtual training, kind of like what we're doing right here, but I can yeah. actually train somebody virtually, which Wonderful. means they can be anywhere. And then I also can do home programs, which is kind of a, a once, you know, a one-time thing where I set it up and then that person does it at home. So oh, lots of options and working with me. So many options. I love that. Very cool. All right. So everybody go to, you can go to empowerfitnessoc.com mm -hmm. and uh, remember, and this is actually ironic that Michelle brought this up earlier, but be kind to yourself, whatever that is, maybe give yourself a hug. Who knows? Say nice to yourself. <laughs> yeah. And way to go. <laughs> somebody else. Yeah. Give yourself credit for something that you did. Good that job, was pretty honey. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll see you later, everybody. All right. Bye. Thanks.